Today, we're going to take a look at the most bizarre mansions ever designed. Some of these houses look like a nice place to live in. Others, however, are downright strange. But I'll let you be the judge as we count down the top 15 most unusual mansions in the world. Let's start with number 15, The Glass House. The brainchild of architect Philip Johnson, the idea behind the glass house was to push the envelope of what a livable house could be. It's complete with a kitchen, dining, and sleeping area that's completely visible to those looking from the outside. It fully breaks down the barriers of personal privacy. And while it may have been built all the way back in 1949, it still is considered to be very strange and striking to this very day. Number 14. The Modscape Cliff House Located off the southwest coast of Australia, this five-story home hangs off the edge of a cliff. It's secured with the help of a series of steel pins. Its wraparound glass walls gives incredible views of the ocean below it. The interior is just as stunning, as the top floor contains a garage. And as you go down the structure, you can enjoy a luxurious set of rooms that include a living room, dining room, multiple bedrooms, and perhaps coolest of all, a spa and barbecue on the bottom floor that opens up to an incredible balcony. Number 13. The Kellogg Mansion Some homes are all but unsellable, and this certainly was the case with the Kellogg Mansion. It was built in 1925. The five-bedroom and six-and-a-half bathroom home looks pretty normal from the outside. But by all accounts, the interior is absolutely hideous. A mishmash of styles including Baroque, Rococo, and Art Deco. The Technicolor house is simply tasteless, and it was because of this that it was on the market for a grand total of eight years before a buyer purchased it for $4 million. And while this may seem a bit steep, the buyer only bought it for the value of the land, and since then the entire mansion has been destroyed with a wrecking ball. Number 12. Falling Water as the name suggests, Falling Water is a home that features a lot of, well, falling water. Created by American architect Frank Lloyd Wright for the Kaufman family, it's located in the mountains of southwestern Pennsylvania, and it stands apart for having been built on top of a waterfall. It creates an effect where it looks like the house is actually releasing the waterfall, and it's so beautiful that it was deemed to be the best all-time work of American architecture by the American Institute of Architects, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 11. The Upside Down House the Upside Down House is, as the name suggests, a home that's completely flipped on its head. While built more as an artistic statement than as a place you could actually live in, the home, which is located in the seaside resort of Trasenheide in Germany, is entirely flipped upside down. What's even crazier is that it's not just the exterior, but also the interior that's flipped, with sofas, kitchen appliances, potted plants, and paintings all hanging above your head as you walk through, making this home one of the trippiest on this list. Number 10. The Hobbit House While the Hobbit homes used in the Lord of the Rings movies may be on display in New Zealand, a man in far-off Wales took inspiration from them to build his very own, fully-lived-in Hobbit House. Built by Simon Dale alongside his father-in-law, the home was built using just a chisel, chainsaw, hammer, and about 3,000 pounds worth of materials. Despite not having any experience as a carpenter or a contractor, the pair were hard set on building a home that blended into nature around it, and to do so, they made a structure that was as eco-friendly as possible. By scrounging up recycled materials and building it into the hillside, the two kept costs low, and after working away at it for four months, the end result was incredible. Separated into two floors, the ground level has a cozy living room, kitchen, and children's room heated with a wood-burning stove, while the second floor is a master bedroom. Although the house features a natural aesthetic, it also has all the trappings of modern living, with this including solar panels for electricity, a fridge cooled by underground air, and clean water from a nearby stream. Simon Dale hopes that his home will be an example for others who want to live a simple, eco-friendly lifestyle. And for the sake of the planet, I hope that some of his ideas catch on. Number 9. The Guangzhou Nail House For years, China's been on a massive development campaign. This has led to the creation of vast networks of roads, hospitals, and shopping malls, and this has necessitated a central government to buy up large areas of land. While the government usually acquires it via eminent domain, that is to say, they're allowed to legally force people to sell their land to them, from time to time, homeowners will refuse to accept the Chinese government's offers and simply stay put inside their homes. This has led to the creation of so-called nail houses. The term nail house is a bit derogatory in China, and it's used because the homes they describe stubbornly stick out like a nail in an otherwise completely changed area. 
There are several that exist throughout the country, however, the Guangzhou Nail House may just be the most famous of them all. You see, the homeowner, who has only been identified as Miss Liang, was told to sell her home to the government. However, despite increasing offers, she refused to sell, with this apparently being because the replacement home was in a bad location. After 10 years, the government went so far as to offer her two homes, but Miss Liang demanded four. At this point, negotiations reached a deadlock. It was then that the government and real estate developer simply decided to build a highway bridge around Mrs. Liang's 430-square-foot home. The end result has been a home that receives almost no light, a lot of noise, and air pollution, and while it may seem like a horrendous place to live, Miss Liang said that, quote, You think this environment is poor, but I feel it's quiet, liberating, pleasant, and comfortable, end quote. So, as long as she's happy and the highway can function, I suppose this strange and somewhat dangerous arrangement works. Number 8. The Carrot House If you've got claustrophobia, then I'd suggest staying far away from the Carrot House. As the Guinness World Record holder for being the world's slimmest house, it's pretty cramped. After all, not only is it just 150 square feet, but it measures in at a mere 152 centimeters at its widest point and just 92 centimeters at its thinnest. Now, the Carrot House is located in Poland's capital city of Warsaw, and it was designed and completed in 2012 by Polish architect Jakub Szczesny from a concept piece that was created during the Wola Art Festival in 2009. Now, while small, the carrot house is nevertheless quite comfortable. Thanks to some clever floor planning, the home manages to not only fit a kitchen, bathroom, and a sleeping area, but even some basic appliances such as a small sink, a cooking stove, and a mini fridge. This is all possible because everything's connected by a ladder rather than a staircase, making things a bit more space efficient. To top it off, the house has tons of windows in order to let natural light in, making the home quite a sight to behold. But the coolest part about the Carrot House is that it functions as a home for traveling writers and artists. You see, the name for the building actually comes from an Israeli author and filmmaker by the name of Etgar Carrot, as he led the commission for the house and was its first resident. As a result, the idea is that the residents will always house artistic individuals. While this is a beautiful sentiment, you gotta be a pretty rich artist in order to join this tradition. That's because it costs 2,500 euros for a 10-night stay, and upon entering, an artist agrees that all artistic work that is done while staying there has to be put on display upon the completion of the residency. So, unless you're a serious artist, the Carrot House is likely not worth staying in. Moving on to number 7, the Corby Home. While most millionaires and billionaires have top-of-the-line security at their homes, Al Corby takes things a step further than most. As the head of the security firm Strategically Armored and Fortified Environments, or SAFE, he's been in the security industry for a while, and he's used that experience to make his Hollywood Hills mansion a bona fide fortress. From the outset, it looks like any other Los Angeles mansion, as it has crisp white walls covered in artwork, is home to some incredible furniture, and has beautiful views of the city. However, the minute you get within 600 meters of his home, Al Corby has his eyes on you. That's because the entire perimeter has sensors to pick up on any intruders, and even if you do manage to get to the door, it will only open if its biometric recognition software allows you to come in. If you then decide to break in, you'll be hit with smoke from a smoke system that billows out a combination of pepper spray and other unnamed chemicals. And while I don't know the exact concoction, it's so strong that it can reportedly disorient an intruder for 24 hours. In case things get really hairy, Corby has planned ahead by also installing a massive 2,500-square-foot ballistics-proof bunker. Bolted to the ground with the help of steel-reinforced concrete caissons that burrow 9 meters down into Corby's private hilltop, it functions as a fully equipped home inside a home. Operating on geothermal power from the ground below, it features sustainable food supplies, personal water wells, and a fully equipped medical facility, allowing Corby and his family to camp out underground for long periods of time. And, of course, if things get really hairy, there's even a rooftop helipad. And in case of a catastrophic event, Corby has a contract with a local helicopter company to pick him up and his family and whisk them away within 15 minutes of an incident happening. So, I think you're going to agree, few houses are quite as secure as Mr. Corby's. Number 6. The Zero Home in recent years, there's been a push to make homes as energy efficient as possible, and the Zero Home can be a model for how that can be done. It's located in Salt Lake City, Utah. The Zero Home was made in collaboration between Vivint and Garbet Homes. 
and aim to prove that it is possible to mass-produce super-futuristic and high-tech houses, costing about $150 per square foot, which is similar in price to conventional houses. The Zero Home stands apart for being both eco-friendly and cost-efficient. That's because this home not only gives off net-zero emissions, but also has a utility bill of just under $300 a month. This is possible because unlike conventional homes, the Zero Home has a lot of unconventional additions. One of the most important is its energy source. It features a grand total of 40 solar panels, as they generate 10 kilowatts of electrical power per day, and this is enough to power the home without having to take resources from the grid. The Zero Home also stands apart for using unconventional framing techniques. More specifically, while most builders use 2x4 studs for the home's frame and 16 inches on center, Garbett used larger 2x6 lumber and 24-inch centers. These changes provide more room for insulation, reducing the number of places where unwanted temperature transfers could happen, and reducing the overall cost to build the house. To top this off, the Zero Home is also very high-tech heating, cooling, and water treatment systems. You see, while the home has super-efficient HVAC that's used just 5% of the time, it instead uses an even more efficient ERV machine about 95% of the time. Furthermore, while most homes always have about 180 to 230 liters of piping hot water available 24-7, the Zero Home maintains 180 liters of water at just 30 degrees Celsius and uses natural gas to heat it up even warmer temperatures if need be. When you further consider that the home also has a top-notch security system, very eco-friendly construction materials, and top-of-the-line appliances, it should come as no surprise that this home could be a model of efficiency and style for future home developments. Number 5. Bill Gates Xanadu 2.0 Now, as one of the world's richest and most important tech entrepreneurs, it makes sense that Bill Gates' mansion is a step above that of the average billionaire. It is popularly known as Xanadu 2.0. The home is located in Medina, Washington, and comes in at an astounding 66,000 square feet. It's constructed in the Pacific Lodge style. It uses wood from a total of 500 Douglas fir trees, and it's designed to seamlessly blend in with the forest surrounding it. And while it may seem impossible to truly make use of a 66,000 square foot complex, Gates does his very best to do so. For example, the home features an 18-meter-long swimming pool with an underwater music system, a 2,500-square-foot gym, a 1,000-square-foot dining room, and a private library with a dome-shaped roof and oculus. However, what gives Xanadu 2.0 a spot on this list is the creepy security system Gates has in place. Put simply, once you get within a mile of the property, Bill Gates can track your every move. After all, the entire perimeter is guarded by a system of heat sensors, giving Gates an advanced warning of your arrival. But once you're inside, he takes things a step further by subjecting his guests to a pin system. Upon entering the house, each guest is given a special pin, and while this pin has some upsides, after all it can change the temperature of rooms and the ambient music in the background, it also tracks your movements by working together with the home's pressure-sensitive floors, which in turn means that your exact location is on record at all times. As such, while being a guest at this $147 million mansion would be pretty sweet, it might be a little unsettling. Oh yeah, it's also worth noting that while Xanadu 2.0 is a popular nickname for the mansion, it isn't actually called that by Gates himself. You see, it's the fictional mansion of Charles and Citizen Kane, which is a movie about how money and possessions were unable to make a rich tycoon happy. And while you may agree or disagree with that idea, I think you can agree that this mansion is one of Bill Gates' most fascinating possessions. Number 4. The Flintstone House Okay, of all the homes on this list, few have been the subject of as much controversy as the Flintstone House. In the past, the house was pretty inoffensive. It was built in 1976 as an experimental type of structure that makes perfectly round domes using a method known as monolithic dome construction. This was invented in 1975, just one year before construction. This monolithic dome process works by constructing steel rebar and wire mesh frames over large inflated balloons. These are then sprayed with high-velocity concrete known as shotcrete, and the end result is a home with a very unique look. Beyond the strange aesthetic, though, the home is luxurious. It consists of three bedrooms, two baths, and a two-car garage. The entire complex is about 2,700 square feet of living space, and it's caused to attract several different owners, and it's rumored that both George Lucas and several famous Silicon Valley investors have lived there before. However, just because the home is kind of luxurious, it doesn't mean that it's well-liked by those in the community. You see, many believe that the home is an eyesore, and in the mid-1980s, several homeowners in the community tried to have the home torn down after it began to experience serious sinkage and show cracks caused by water runoff. 
However, in 1987, a massive renovation and change in ownership brought the home back to life. And in 2000, many residents became even more annoyed when the entire thing was painted orange, giving it its characteristic Flintstones look. In 2017, the Flintstones design went even further after the property was purchased by a certain Florence Fong. After paying a whopping $2.8 million, she began to make some interesting additions to the home. This has included several four and a half meter tall dinosaurs, an enormous metal woolly mammoth and giraffe, life-size models of Fred Flintstone, Dino, and the Great Gazoo, and his saucer, and an enormous sign reading Yabba Dabba Doo. This was a few too many steps too far for the local residents, who then went through legal action to have the sculptures removed due to lack of permits. However, in 2021, a settlement was reached where Florence Fong received $125,000 from the city and was allowed to keep all the sculptures. And the result? The Flintstones house is officially here to stay. Number 3. Tiger Woods Jupiter Island Estate From the late 1990s to the late 2000s, Tiger Woods was one of the most dominant athletes on the PGA Tour. After all, he achieved most of his 82 PGA Tournament wins during this era, landing him a career earnings of more than $150 million and a total of about a billion dollars when including sponsorships. And while his golfing abilities have cooled ever since his 2009 accident, this lack of recent tournament money hasn't stopped him from holding on to his massive Jupiter Island estate. Jupiter Island is located in southeastern Florida and was purchased back in 2006 for $40 million with his then-wife Ellen Nordegren. Now, on the surface, its sprawling grounds and more than 9,700 square foot beachfront make it a gorgeous property. Meanwhile, the buildings themselves, which include a 3,300 square foot living area and 6,400 square foot multi-purpose building, are truly elite. As they include luxury finishings, top-of-the-line rooms, and in the multi-purpose building, a world-class gym, wine cellar, and oxygen therapy room. However, it's Tiger's backyard that gives this home a spot on this list. That's because while it has cool amenities such as a 30-meter swimming pool, an outdoor basketball court, and tennis court, the backyard's true claim to fame is its massive personal golf course. Consisting of four greens, six bunkers with different depths and types of sand, a video center, a putting studio, it is the first place that Tiger gets to have his warm-up shots when waking up in the morning. And while technically a little short for a pro, after all it's too small for him to hit anything more than a 7-iron, it makes up for its lack of size with its technology. For example, it's got differently contoured turf grass management systems in place to allow for the customization of green speeds. What this means is Tiger can have the grass grow at different speeds in both the fairway and rough, allowing him to fine-tune it to the conditions of his next tournament. As an added touch, it was even designed so Tiger can hit practice balls from his second-floor bedroom, allowing him to get some swings both in the morning and at night. As a result, the property is now valued at an astounding $54 million. And while this makes it prohibitively expensive for most, it would be the perfect purchase for a wealthy professional golfer should Woods ever decide to sell it. Number 2. The White House while it's normal for heads of state to have their own homes, the White House is in a league of its own. The first rendition was built in 1800. Much of it was destroyed by the British during the War of 1812, and the current rendition is the result of years of renovations. This has resulted in a house that is truly over the top. It consists of 132 rooms, 35 bathrooms, and six floors. The place is massive, and it was divided into several parts. These consist of iconic areas such as the Executive Residence, the West Wing, the East Wing, and more niche buildings such as the Eisenhower Executive Office Building, which houses the Office of the President's Staff and the Vice President, and Blair House, which is a guest residence. It's also worth noting that there's also plenty of recreation opportunities at the White House, with these including a tennis court, indoor pool, and a bowling alley. It's also worth noting that the White House is one of the most secure homes on the planet. Every inch of the perimeter is surrounded in a complex series of infrared lasers that cover the sky, surface, and underground, making it impossible to enter undetected. While they are sensitive enough to detect even the most minuscule threats, this can often be a bit of a pain. For example, there are records of Secret Service agents storming into the White House only to find a small squirrel running about. Above the ground, the airspace of Washington, D.C. is considered to be a no-fly zone, so if anyone or anything enters that area, a team of drones and a set of sensors will pick up on it. And if necessary, there are several surface-to-air missiles that can be dispatched to deal with the threat. As a final resort, the White House also has a high fence and bulletproof windows, making it pretty difficult for even hardcore assailants to get inside. 
Despite this hardcore security, though, several people have managed to enter the White House uninvited. Some, such as Omar Gonzalez, has used violence against the White House security in their quest to reach the president. Others, such as Robert Lada, were able to simply walk past security. So, it is technically possible to enter the White House uninvited. If you'd like to enter without being tailed by the Secret Service, it is possible to go on a perfectly legal tour. This tour takes visitors through a few carefully selected parts of the facility, although you must book 21 days in advance, so Secret Service can do a background check on you and make sure that you're not there for nefarious purposes. Number 1. The Palace of Versailles No list of unusual homes would be complete without the extremely opulent Palace of Versailles. Built by King Louis XIV of France, he was known as the Sun King during his time because he believed he was like the Sun to France, chosen by God to rule and set to make France an even grander country than it already was. As you might expect, this type of delusional self-aggrandizement extended to all areas of the Sun King's life, and this included his real estate holdings. Versailles had originally been home to a simple hunting lodge, but Louis put a lot of time and effort into turning it into a palace. Expanding it in several phases from 1661 until 1715, it became absolutely massive. And from 1682 until the French Revolution, it served as both the official royal residence and the seat of government. After the French Revolution was over, it was abandoned for a few years until being taken up by the one and only Napoleon Bonaparte as a summer residence. Once Napoleon was deposed, it was again left more or less untouched until the arrival of King Louis-Philippe. In a bid to gain popular support and take advantage of France's massive Bonapartist tradition, he made a number of friendly gestures towards the deceased leader. One of the most notable included the creation of what can be called a massive Napoleon shrine at the palace. For example, he set up the Empire Rooms to commemorate all of Napoleon's successful battles, year after year, campaign after campaign, while further revamps such as the creation of a coronation room to celebrate Napoleon's crowning and the gallery of great battles in Versailles' largest room to commemorate his military successes, these all make Versailles a must-see for anyone who likes Napoleon. While this may sound like a lot of Napoleon tributes to fill up one place, the absolute grand size of Versailles cannot be overstated. After all, it has a grand total of 2,300 rooms, and a good portion of them are open to the public. And while Napoleon does take up a large percentage of the palace, there are also tributes to France's older monarchs, and rows of rooms that show exactly how the imperial family lived, slept, and entertained guests pre-French Revolution. But of all the rooms at the mansion, the Hall of Mirrors is probably the coolest. Completed in 1684, it's a massive 73-meter-long Baroque reception hall, and it's adorned with over 300 mirrors in order to provide a striking lighting effect. To add to that grandeur, the Hall of Mirrors also has crystal chandeliers, gilded statues, and S-tier ceiling paintings, making it one of the most bedazzling rooms out there. And if all of that wasn't enough, Versailles also has an incredible exterior fit with a massive garden and a series of fountains, which include the Four Seasons Fountains, the Fountains of the Fight of the Animals, and the Neptune Fountain. So, if you like history, architecture, art, horticulture, or a mix of the four, you cannot go wrong with a visit to the Palace of Versailles. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.